So in this last video, I wanted us to just see the potential of using this monadic uh, continuation passing style uh, to control execution. And what I wanted to show is um, you might be familiar with some programming language which have a yield construct, which I'm going to introduce in the following slides. Um, and what we're going to learn in this segment is just how you would go about and implement it. I'm not going to discuss implementation details um, too deeply. I'm just going to go over them uh, quickly. It's more for you to understand um, the potential of it rather than understanding the actual implementation. I did leave comments in the code so that you can, in your own leisure, um, go through the code and if you're curious about understanding a bit better how it works. And I'm very happy to talk about it if, you, if you're inclined. So, um, what is yield? Yield is, if you recall streams, is just another way of programming streams in putting it in very short, uh, simple terms. So you remember we learned about how, how we did promise lists and streams. Uh, yield is just a programming language feature that allows programmers to represent streams in a very simple way. It's usually for finite streams, um, so more akin to the promise list that we implemented, but you can also use it to implement uh, infinite streams. Another way of thinking about yield is just a way to return multiple values where you have delayed evaluation in between values. So, you know, that's another way of thinking about streams as well. You would, what you want to do is I want to return a list of things, but I want to delay the evaluation per element from left to right. So that would be another way of, of thinking about uh, a yield and a stream. So just to give you a bit of motivation why you would want to use yields, I wanted to show you a bit of code that I've used um, during my own research. Uh, and this was a project where we we used machine learning to understand um, large data sets of code. The basic idea is that you might be in a company with really large data sets of source code. Um, and what that means is that there is this um, basically a lot of good practices that are um, diluted in the code. It's not really written anywhere, but people who are used to writing that code, they follow certain practices, which means that there are cer certain patterns in their APIs that might not be in the, in the documentation, but that arise from, you know, multiple people working on the same code and they have some kind of understanding of it. Um, so in this slide, what I wanted to show you is just a small excerpt and of code that we use to analyze such code. So what the first stage of analyzing large repositories of, of source code is really to parse it. So you might want to have, you, you have probably a, a C++ parser, which is what we used, and you need to have some kind of um, representation of the source code, which is what we've learned in this course as well, that is known as the AST, and if you've had uh, CS451, you might have also learned that there. So the AST is just a logical representation of your code, right? Um, but if you are handling large data sets, you might encounter really large um, source files. I'm talking about gigabytes of source code, which when it's parsed and converted into this logical representation, it might use, it might explode into tens or hundreds or thousands of gigabytes of code. So that might become a problem. So generally, whenever you're handling large data sets, the basic principle is that you cannot hold everything in memory and streams are essential. So if you do any kind of data science, um, the notion of stream programming is crucial. So how would you do that in Python? So this is a very simple code of real code that I've, I've used in my own research, as I was saying. And what I'm doing is I'm iterating over um, the elements of an XML file. 
So what I'm doing is on each line in this loop, I'm creating, I'm basically parsing the file. Just assume it's that. And when I parse the file, I'm going to pass that file to something else. So when I do parse file, what that's going to return is just multiple fragments of uh, the XML. So each, each time, you can imagine that parse file will return a list of files. But because we use the yield, yield uh, keyword, what this is doing is it's delaying the evaluation inside this loop. So the way you can think of this is imagine there are a million elements in the XML. So the way you use it is here. So you would iterate over all elements of parse file. And for every time you get um, the next element, you would get this XML from the call of yields. Okay. So it's similar to what we did in streams when we return a value, right? We were returning a value and we had the cons there that would correspond to this yield here. So yield is just kind of, it's, it's basically syntax to kind of hide away all this me mechanism that we use directly with just function calls. So how would we go about and implement it? Well, there are many ways we can do that. One way that I would suggest, you know, when you're working in, in, a, in a job, there are things that researchers have already studied and thought about quite a bit. And for instance, what I'm using to guide the implementation that I'm going to show you is based on this um, 2011 paper, uh, which I have opened here. Um, and if you scroll up, this is a paper written in Haskell. And it's called Yield Mainstream Delimited Continuations. It's a very cool paper if you want to learn a bit more what it, what is Yield and how it's been used in programming languages. So they talk a bit of history. So it's kind of like a bit of a survey of how Yield has been used in programming languages and so on. Um, so you have examples in Ruby and JavaScript uh, and C-sharp and so on, Python. Uh, and then they proceed to explain the intuition. And then finally, they have this monadic yield, which is what we're implementing. Um, they also have, this is implemented in Haskell, so the syntax is going to be a bit different. Um, but for the sake of, per for, for our purpose, I'm just going to show you my own implementation, which is based on this paper. And here is uh, their implementation. Uh, but now we're going to shift back to our own code, which is written in Racket. So 